Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Strand Tennis Center podcast, filled with tips, advice, tennis, not tennis, just life advice too, whatever you need. Uh, like it on YouTube, share it on uh, the podcast as well. Thank you. How long have you had dementia, Santi? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All my life. All my life, Santi. Are we ready? Are we? We are ready. Those are nice. You like these? Yeah. Oh, these? Yeah. She's talking oh, about... Shoes. Oh, the shoes. Yeah, she's... Uh, this is Caroline, by the way. She's talking about my on clouds. <laughs> these are the Federer walking shoes, though. These are not the playing shoes, but... Oh, I asked for a pair feds. for Christmas. Look at those. You see them? They're awesome. <laughs> Federer does everything great. Of course... What? Are you... You just screw this up? No. What an idiot. Idiot. Do it again. <laughs> we did the whole thing. Are we on? He screwed that up. Uh, Caroline was asking about my feds. <laughs> These are the walking shoes, Caroline. They look very hip, but you can't play in them. You look, you look, I mean, even though I don't look hip, my wife will say, you look like an idiot with these. But, no, they're nice. He, uh, did you have, have, have you tried the on clouds? Running no, shoes wise? I asked for them for Christmas. And you didn't get them? They're on my Christmas list. Oh, this Christmas the list. White though. ones, specifically. Yeah, the white ones are nice. No, I mean, Roger did it again, right? He's, I don't know if he has part ownership of the company, but he's obviously making a lot of money off. They went public, that company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I she's like, know that. Uh, Caroline will talk tennis. We won't talk <laughs> business with Caroline. Caroline, what do you think of the stock market today? That's a question for my dad. <laughs> That's a question for my dad. <laughs> yeah, no, they're great. They're great. Walk- they're like Stan Smith. You remember the sh- Stan Smith shoe? Of course I know yeah, 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 yeah. They're awesome. I live so, at a tennis gallery. I, I know I should know this down in, <laughs> down in Carolina. This documentary came out. You should watch it. Was it good? It was so good. Is it on uh, Netflix? Not yet. It came out last week. Okay, I have it's good, to. Though. I have to see it. I, I have the book. Like I'm not a shoe. You know that one he had. Oh, uh, I did that. I'm not the shoe. Yeah. It's really good. So we just started into this. But anyway, this is Caroline McGinley. She is a very successful tennis player that we've known for a while. And she will give us, well, you should do a little intro on yourself. Give us a little bit about who you are, when you started playing, or just give us a little credentials. Give us a little bit of the Caroline McGinley bio in two minutes. Um, well, I'm 17 years old. I was born in New Jersey and lived here up until Wait my... Wait a second, Santi Shock. How, how old do you think she was? Well, I thought she was already like 18. No. She's no, she's, she's, wow. she'll, she'll go through this. Okay. Well, that's, really <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. I'm a senior in high school. Um, I lived in New Jersey up until freshman year, and then when COVID hit, I decided to move down south to Hilton Head, South Carolina, and train and live full-time at Smith Stearns Tennis Academy. So... I come up north for the holidays now, and I'm always here, always at the Strand. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a promotional thing for the Strand, but <laughs> go ahead, keep going. It's a good place. Yeah. I love it here. Oh, but, thank um, you. appreciate that. Yeah, I'm going to Clemson in, not really sure yet, but maybe January of 24. It depends, but yeah, I'm so excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you there. So how long do you plan to stay out? How long do you wanna, do you wanna kinda test this and see how well you do? Before you kind of, I thought he was going to hit me with the ball. Before you uh, <laughs> decide to to go in in June, what's your kind of thoughts? I um, so with COVID, the fifth years and then the grad transfers, there were very few scholarships for the yeah. class of twenty three. So looking into the class of twenty four, I mean, it gave me more flexibility in terms of when I like what schools I could go to, sure. but also. I get next year to travel, like play ITFs, like see what I can do with that. Yeah. So it actually turns into maybe a positive because yeah. all those kids that were around for the five, for the fifth year, they get an extra year. Yeah. They're hanging around. So you'll just say, maybe I'll just defer, mm-hmm. start in June and play tourneys. And if mm-hmm. I do really well, maybe I have a problem to figure out. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good opportunity. I'm yeah. excited. I mean, what? Well, we'll go through the whole, but. Let's go, th- let's go to the college thing because we started. How difficult was this process for you? Did you have an idea or did you kind of, like, was Clemson always on your radar or was it something that was a process for you to get there? Uh, it was a really, really long process. I started off with being like, I'm using my tennis to get to the best academic school I could possibly get to. Yeah. Realized that, obviously coming from New Jersey, that would be going to the Ivies, like UPenn, something sure. like that. 
realized pretty quickly I had very little interest in that. <laughs> I kind of wanted to see, like, how much I could do with my tennis and Correct. play for a big D1 school. Sure. We're also getting, like, the best of both worlds. Um, so then I started looking into schools like Vandy, Duke, but obviously those are the best tennis programs in the country and very sure. hard to, go, like, go to in general. So, I mean, as time passed, like, obviously there were ups and downs with the tennis. <laughs> sure, I get it, I get it. Um, it's the way it is, the yeah. life of a tennis player. Yeah, yeah Good definitely. weeks, good months, bad months, good weeks. Yeah, so, I mean, there were definitely, like, a bunch of doors opened in terms of maybe I wasn't playing as well, so, like, an option that I never really thought of, like, came into play. Yeah. But um, Clemson came into play over the summer, this past summer. They watched me play at Nationals, and my coach in South Carolina is good friends with the assistant, who's actually now the head for this upcoming season. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, so uh, they watched me play a lot. We had a girl, S. Miss Stearns, go to Clemson, so okay. that was a big part of it, but... Yeah, I visited, and honestly, I was like, this is where I belong. After I visited the school, I went on two more visits. Awesome. And I was like, no, like, I want to stay south. I want to stay somewhere warm. Yeah, the yeah, The cold yeah. is not really my no, thing. No, it's not fun. <laughs> Everybody wants it. It's like, what is it today? It's probably 40 for we're lucky. It sucks. Everybody it's wants so to be somewhere else when they get up here. So cold. New Jersey. We're in New Jersey. So. Of course. So flying into New York City last night, I was like, <laughs> I can't ever leave. This is my favorite place ever. <laughs> it was amazing. Like, looking over the lights at night in the so plane. You are you talking about the city now? Yeah. You just said how you hate the cold. I do but hate the cold. But you love this city. But it's home. This is home. Yeah, I get I'll it. I'll always love home. I get it. <laughs> now, the facilities in Clemson, you think about it. You think about how great they are, right? Yeah. How much support you're going to get. It's, it, it's almost great to play a year there, too, as well, because you're getting all these facilities on their dime, and you can still play tournaments in the summer as well. It's probably a great thing, too, if you're, like, on that edge of saying, hey, do I want to turn professional or do I not? And you've got a great support system. Yeah, when I visited, that was probably one of the biggest things that I, I loved about the school. I met with, like, academic advisors, um, the head of, like, athletics, and everything they said, everything, like, their whole goal in their lives and their job was to better the lives of the athletes and That's making awesome. sure that they had everything they could ever possibly want. And honestly, like, I heard that from other schools, but... From them, it was like, it was like truly their. They believed it. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. So to go through that the recruiting process. How quickly can you tell? And I tell this to everybody, where you feel like someone's really not being truthful to you, or do you? Is your radar go up real quick? Is it easy to tell when you're like this coach? I don't buy this coach. I think they're full of shit. Or, is it hard? I mean. I was kind of big into, like, first impressions, like, first phone calls, yeah. whether I got, like, a good vibe or not from the coach. I uh, can't say that always works, though, because there was one coach where I was, like, absolutely not. After the phone call, phone call I was, like, no, I would never go there. Yeah. I ended up visiting, absolutely loved it. Like, it was, like, one of my top choices for a while. So I would say sometimes it's hard to tell with, especially if the coach is, like, maybe a little more foreign, like, the yeah. barriers. But I think you can tell. I think one of the biggest parts is – a coach that really wants you on their team like being wanted I thought was like a really big deal because um, you know like they'll treat you well they put in a lot of effort in like communicating with you so I think that's definitely big um, there are definitely a few schools where you feel that a lot more than others and yeah. obviously Clemson was one of them but I mean I think it's if you can relate to the coach like go on a visit and you never feel like you're not in a good place you're never like at home when talking to them like I think that's like you basically like know that's a good option Speaking of coaching, we'll digress for a second. What do you need? What is the biggest thing for you, your personality? What do you need from a coach? Do you need him or her? Do you need much technical talk, or do you feel like you need just more strategic or just somebody that understands one or two things to say to you at the right time? I'd say more strategic and then the correct one or two things. Maybe like a coach that, I mean, obviously over time, like it gets easier for a coach to understand this, but... Um, as they get to know you, like, they know, like, your temper on the court. And, like, if things aren't going well, they, like, they know what to say to you to calm you down. Sure. Or, um, I mean, I, obviously, technical is, like, not the best at sometimes, But, I sure. mean, sometimes it's also needed. Yeah. I know that. My forehand struggled. <laughs> <laughs> We've I talked about it. it. I fixed it. Is it smaller and everything? April. Look at you. I know. I've been working on it. You can and see the it. the backhand was so smooth. I know. We love my backhand. Look at that. We, we love, love my backhand. We, we love, love my backhand. <laughs> Santi, we love her backhand, son. We love son. my backhand. No, yeah, I know. But, like, especially that case, you don't need someone to over-talk when someone's at this level. Just a couple of things, because if they get in their head too much mm -hmm. and then they try to correct too much and think about the mistake, it just 
it just messes them up. Maybe yeah. you say one thing. Like, we'll go through, I don't know, she'll play for two hours. Maybe we'll say three things. You know, most of the time, it's just a little adjustment. And again, it's if you ever heard your father knows the 80-20 principle in finance, it's just 20% change makes all the 80% results for you. Yeah. And that's the big key. It's when people try to talk too much as coaches because mm-hmm. they feel like they have to say something. It makes them important, but it just really <laughs> devalues them. And you just You just got to shut up sometimes. Agreed. I do yeah. agree with that. So lineup-wise, we'll talk about specifics here. What's your goal to play on the team? Where are you at? Where are they ranked now? What is Clemson rank? They finished last season, I think, like 40 in the country. Okay. Um, the head coach actually this past week just got let go. So now the assistant is taking over the head coach's position. And one of the older men's coaches, I think he coached from like 2008 to 2013 or something like that, is going to be the assistant for this okay. year. Do you... Did you know that was kind of happening? Did you have any I did idea? Not. You did. You were, I did was, not it, was it? So that's a great recruiting thing. Did you go for the head coach, or did you go for the assistant that you connected to? Yeah, I mean, I my coaches have always told me that there's always a possibility of a coach being let go, and sure. you have to be okay with that. Like, there's a lot more you need to like about a school than just the coach. So yeah. I definitely kept that in mind, but. I never thought it'd personally happen to me because it's kind of just like you hear it happening to other yeah. people and you're like, oh, wow, that really sucks. But, yeah. I mean, I can't say – it was definitely shocking and not something I would love to hear on, like, a Tuesday morning. But <laughs> <laughs> On a Tuesday morning. <laughs> By the way, your coach I, is gone. Uh, I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's probably for the better if that's the case. There's always, like, a new beginning. I know the yeah. assistant is super excited with the role that she's taking over. So, I mean, I think it's going to be really good for the team. I think the, I think the girls on the team love the assistant. Um, she's super bubbly. A little That's British nice. girl. She's good. She's super bubbly. Um, loves it. Like, loves the sport. Loves coaching. So, awesome. I mean, I think, it's, I think it'll be good. I don't – I think people should realize there's still a lot of pressure with these coaches – in these big time schools, even though it's tennis and you think, oh, you know, it's not football, there's still pressure and you will get fired if you don't deliver results. You know they want Clemson to be in the top 10. They know they want them challenging for national championships and things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you go to a, a tennis match in Georgia. Have you been to a tennis match in Georgia? I mean, it's insane. Mm-hmm. That facility is ridiculous. You might as well feel like you're at a football game sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So these things are very serious uh, and you got to produce results, and that's why when I tell kids about getting to your level, just keep it out there for a while. Just put your head down and work hard because this is a lot of work. That's what I want to get into as well. Did you think it would be this much work? You started as a kid. When did you start playing tennis? When I was six. Six. It was something you just liked, right? It was fun to play. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you happened. Like, when we were interviewing Miriam uh, Bolsfiver. She's uh, like 150 in the world. She came and played in the summertime. I tried to hook you up with her. You weren't here. Remember oh, I texted you? You were, in San, you were in San yeah. Diego. Yeah. And she, from the country of Georgia, at, she just started playing, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden became, just loved playing, loved playing, loved playing. And all of a sudden it was getting results. It was a weird thing. Somebody told her, you know, you have enough points to do this. And she's just like, what are points? Like, because <laughs> she's from the country of Georgia. had no idea, right? Mm-hmm. So did it happen for you where you were just playing all of a sudden you were successful and you liked it and it kind of fed into itself or was it a decision to say, hey, really early on, I want to be really good at this sport? Mm -hmm. Um, When I was younger, I was always one of the better ones. I think it came pretty naturally to me and I I like enjoyed it. So I I would play a lot. Um, When I was younger, probably like 10 and unders, I would play a tournament as often as I possibly could. would make Mm -hmm. my parents sign me out, take me to Bogota. (laughs) <laughs> I, uh, what a haul. I won a lot, though, in 10 and unders, and I honestly think that had a lot to do with the fact that I stuck with it because yeah. it's just, like, a lot Success. of accomplishments as a yeah. young kid. So I saw something in myself. I always had coaches that would be like, oh, like, we see a lot in you. Like, you're yeah. capable of a lot. So I think that definitely stuck with me growing up, obviously. As I got older, I think, I mean, it definitely got, like, mentally tougher. Eighth grade was, I mean, in eighth grade, I kind of questioned a lot of it, but then realized that if sure. I stick with it, like, I can go pretty far with it. Um, so, I mean, the ups and downs, but overall, I think sticking with it obviously was the best decision yeah. we could have done. It's so fun. Like, especially now, ever since I committed, like, it is, I have the yeah. time of my life playing tennis. That's great. You see, that's what it is. You're going to have points where 
it's going to be difficult. Anything you do that you like is still going to be hard, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to fight through that, right? If yeah. people get a little bit of resistance and they quit, I think the biggest thing that you said was your parents didn't force you. Yeah. You wanted to, you forced them to take you to a tournament. I think parents have to realize that. The yeah. kid has got to force the parents. The parents forcing mm -hmm. the kid is just the worst. Mm -hmm. It's like I told Santi, if I force him to do a job he doesn't want to do, he's going to quit. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Big facts. Big, big. He forces me all the time. I don't like being here, Steve. He doesn't <laughs> want to be this. I don't like you. I'd rather be surfing or skiing. He loves to surf and ski. Oh, I love to surf. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Um, but you cannot force your kid to do something they do not want to do. And I said the same thing, but the kids can't be like, I don't want to do anything mm -hmm. and just give me money. You can't do that either, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be focused at what you want to do. You have to have some goal or drive. Mm -hmm. So eighth grade, high school, COVID hits. Were you always already thinking of leaving or were you like, I know because you love the high school team. Mm -hmm. You're having a great time. Absolutely loved it. Was it was literally because of COVID you said, hey, I still want to train and I want to go to school. So let me go to an academy. Yeah, I had a friend from Texas, actually. She texted me and was like, hey, guess what? I'm moving down to Hilton Head. I'm living at a tennis academy. And for some reason, like, I, for so many years, I had my, well, my dad mostly. My mom never wanted me to leave. But my dad yeah. being like, hey, like, would you ever think about doing this? Like, maybe going to somewhere like IMG. And yeah, I was yeah. like, absolutely not. Like, I love New Jersey. I love home. I love my school. I'm not going anywhere. My friend texted me, and I was like, that sounds so fun. Because at that point... I wasn't really playing tennis, maybe in, like, my backyard, like, twice a week. Yeah. Like, the motivation was lacking. Yeah. So my friend said that, and I was like, that actually sounds so fun. We, we ended up planning it so quickly. Within, like, two months, I was already leaving, like, packing up and leaving. But uh, we went down together. We were roommates. Like, it was a good – it was a really hard transition, but we were doing it together. So I think that was a it made it a little easier. It. Yeah. So it basically – it all started with her being like, let's go. Like, let's do this. Let's, let's go to college. Like, let's do this. I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah, crazy. So how how hard how long did it take for the adjustment you felt really comfortable? Was it six months? Was it a few weeks? Did you feel like, all right, I really am settled here? What do you think? Mm, I would say honestly, like a few weeks. The first week I was there, I my parents came down with me, so it was fine. Like I was getting adjusted to that, having like getting new friends, stuff like yeah. that. When I moved into the house by myself, the first like week or two awful yeah. literally the worst week or two yeah. of my life like, it was so bad i uh you're only what 15 at this point i, 15, I mean yeah. that's tough you're it leaving was, your family yeah it was really hard but um i mean my coaches were honestly so supportive like they, they know it's hard they know it's a hard transition yeah um i went to a tournament i think two weeks into being there did i think i won the tournament and i was like okay i'm set like this is good this is good I, success I helps it helps i uh i mean obviously started making more friends that made it better yeah. i was going to school made school friends the person taking care of us was like really great really helpful there's definitely there was things that were different which was definitely hard to adjust to things like having to make my bed every morning when i yeah, wake up yeah. doing my own laundry like making myself my own lunch stuff like that but well, it's a great example. This is why these athletes, you think they're like 40 and they're only like 24 years old, but they've been living and traveling on their own for so long or living and just having to do their own thing. It matures you very quickly being on the tennis tour or playing at that level mm -hmm. because there's no one around. I mean, there's your trainers and things like that, but you're not home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What? Give me... Give us the rundown of the academy life day-wise. Just give us a day. Like, schedule-wise? So, depending on the day, I have a private lesson. Usually, if I have a lesson, it's at 7 a.m. So, I have a private from 7 to 8, and then it's group practice from 8 to 10, and then there's a break from 10 to 2.30 okay. to do school. Kids go to school, or they go home and do online school. And then 2.30 to 4.30 is tennis, 4.30 to 5.30 uh, on-court fitness, and then twice a week, 5.30 to 6.30, you're in the gym. That's a full-time job. It's a full-time job. Yeah. It's fun, though. So it's You a fun have job. to, like, and I, I tell Sunty this all the time. <laughs> Everything equates to business, too. If you are going to do something, start something, start a business, you better love it because you're going to have to work so hard at it anyway. So if you suck at something or just don't like it, I mean, and somebody else really likes it, they're going to work 10 times harder than you. It just doesn't matter. You have to like what you're doing. And the doll was in an interview. True. What? Go ahead, say. That's very true. That's very true. That's very true. Do you love it? You have to love Yeah. 
Are you, what do you think he's going to say in front of I love, me? I love Steve a lot. <laughs> I'm telling he you, keeps, he, keeps, he literally it. keeps me here. Yeah, <laughs> he he knows he knows that like I have other dreams and things, yeah. and but like I love it here, and I wake up happy. That's like the most important. thing. I don't want you to stop your yeah. dreams. I just yeah. don't want you to overthink it. Some people have a yeah. good job or they have a good gig, and they're like. They're always, the grass is always greener. You got to be very careful about that. You know what I mean? Can't be like looking over your shoulder all the time. You know those people that, you know, they're always looking for the, for the, for this and then that. People and the just leave thing. to get extra money or something. Yeah. I'll give you all some extra LT. money. <laughs> relax. Chill. I want a sweatshirt. <laughs> we just that ordered them. Nice. We just ordered them. Uh, but uh, no, that this, was this made actually made. by Leon one of the pros. He makes them himself. Me. You should ask him, but. We're getting them in, but you're going to be gone. You're going to where on Thanksgiving again? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Go I'll be back 20. for Christmas. All right. Christmas we'll have those. Gift. There you you go. want to yeah. put that on your Christmas gift? Oh, my gosh. She I, want, wants I want one, too. Then. On clouds? You like the Fetters and a Strand sweatshirt. I don't know if I can do the on cloud thing, but I can do the Strand sweatshirt thing. Steve can do anything. <laughs> Steve can do anything. anything. Yeah, can do anything. Yeah, sure. The world. yeah, sure. We have just a loose sight table here. We can yeah, do it all. There's no budget. It's no just budget. Uh, no budget. We just wing it. We just wing it. So we'll so the day. So you're practicing the day. So in other words, anything you do is going to take a nine to five type of schedule every single day. Do you have a rest day? Sundays. Over there? Sundays. Saturdays. Saturdays and Sundays. Saturdays is two hours of practice and that's it. And do you feel like that connection helped you even more, not just the training with school? How many schools were you looked at? I know your, your results are your results, but because of the academy, did it create a great network for you as well? It definitely helped. The Going back to the idea of uh, growing independence, that is definitely very attractive to coaches, being able to like understand and know that before the kid comes in, they know how to handle themselves, they know how to like be mature and act in a group setting specifically. Like I lived in a house with eight other girls, and being able to manage that, I yeah. think coaches were like, wow, that's, that's really great. Like They're definitely able to be a team player. Um, in terms of connections, I, my coaches definitely know a lot of other college coaches. BJ, oh, uh, yeah. the head of the academy, obviously played for Texas, was a great player, so mm -hmm. he has a lot of connections through Stan especially as well. But, I mean, obviously, it did fall back a lot on me. I think I did <laughs> a lot of work. It definitely gets... Of course. It, it's, it's a lot having to email coaches constantly, sure. making sure you're keeping up with it, even if you don't want to. It's not the most fun thing, not yeah. even going to lie. Like, it's yeah, really sure. not the most, but, I mean, definitely something you have to do, and I think the biggest thing is just knowing that in the end it does pay off, even though in the moment it might seem like everything you're doing has no purpose to it, and <laughs> you had to have to understand that it all works out exactly how it's supposed to. Yeah, and I don't, and I think you're right. Sometimes you just want to practice and play, but you have to be your own self-advocate because it's like again, I go back to business. There's 20 different, 30 different jobs here. I can't do them all, but I gotta know a little bit about them and be aware of them so they're being done right. So you just have to be aware of who's talking for you or who you're speaking with. You can't let that go. And if you make money on the tour, you've got to be aware of the people that are managing that money. You can't just trust them with it. People steal things all the time. You have to be aware of that. And luckily, your father can handle that part. But, of course. But, <laughs> yes, you have to be able to c contact coaches, learn how to speak to people, learn how to communicate. It's huge. Not just your play. You have to be able to communicate, talk, let because coaches are getting inundated by people as well, and you've got to make your you got to make yourself noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a good personality definitely stands out. So what? When did you finally decide? And we went through the process, but when was the day you were like, I know where I'm going? Like when did you feel it? Like it was a taught was it close one and two, or was it just after a while? It was pretty simple. It was a close one and two. I. Uh, I knew I was getting the offer from Clemson, I think, four days before I was actually given it. So I had four days to basically decide. Okay. So when I did get it, I took it on the phone. I was like, this is where I'm going. Like, I want to be a Tiger. Like, this is it. But um, it was definitely hard. It was a lot of sitting down and making lists of pros and cons. I think the two schools that I was choosing between, I was choosing between Clemson and Penn State. Yeah. So. Obviously, Penn State is up north in Pennsylvania, cold. Great program, though. I absolutely love the coaches. They were yeah. some of the best coaches ever. But um, ultimately, I think just living down south is kind of hard to adjust and go back up north. Yeah, so yeah. I, that was probably the biggest deciding factor. But also, like, ACC tennis, kind of hard to pass Yeah, up. I mean, that's why uh, Seren went to BC, because she wants to play ACC. It's the best conference in the country. Yeah. 
So you got to play on that level, and you want to play. You know, your goal is to I'm like, play, play as high as you can. What do they got? How many seniors do they have over there after June? Do they have? A lot. They do. The team is older. So my the class of 2024 is actually, I believe there's four spots. Okay. So it's. It's not much room. Almost like they're rebuilding the team. Yeah. Yeah. So it give you a lot of opportunity then, too. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was talking about ACC, but. My other question was to you. Uh, I, was, I was on a side note. Did you see Stan at all? Would he show up? I or, see Stan almost every day. Oh, you do? So he is yeah. around. Yeah. No, he comes a lot. He's only not there if he's traveling the world. <laughs> <laughs> Watching tournaments in his blue blazer and stuff yes. like that? Yes. In the box? Yeah. He was in New York City the other day for uh, signing day because his documentary came out. And I gotta see that. He made us FaceTime him while the kids were signing. That's cool. He's a big part of it. He absolutely loves it, and he loves he loves coming home after a few weeks. He'll be visiting, and he'll be like, "I'm seeing great improvement in you guys. Like it's only been three weeks, but I re- I really see the improvement." Is he actually on the court at all? Is he is he actually like with like giving some transferring some information and watching you guys play? Like, yeah, he walks around and basically like he'll ask like he'll see the drills we're doing and then talk to us based on the drills but he he has his four or five specific speeches that we'll get every once in a while they, you, they're on rotation do you, like, do you say great. stand like listen the, the you big forgot turning down the middle speech that's a big one okay. we hear that one a lot well <laughs> well he can't argue with the guy who's been number one in the world and how many slams did he win i don't even know what he like wimbledon what was the u.s i don't i can't remember but yeah crazy he traveled to Vietnam during the war. Did you know that? I didn't even know that. I watched it in his documentary. During the Vietnam War? During the Vietnam War, him and three other, I think it was three other players, played exhibition matches for the soldiers. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's like the Bob Hope of tennis. You remember Bob Hope? He would go to, all, he'd go to Vietnam and speak and, you know, he was a comedian. So yeah. he would do all crazy that stuff. Crazy, though. So, give me an idea of, this is day, but this is so hard. I mean, you obviously want to play professional tennis, right? If I could, yeah. Yeah, if you could, yeah. But what is your kind of short-term goal between now and getting to June? Clemson was. Yeah. Give me that, and then give me the college goal. But give me this one first. You got a decent amount of time. Where do you want your ranking to be? What's your goal? I mean, right now my goal is to just be the best player I can be going into Clemson, to be the just to help them as much as possibly yeah. can. I think that's like the biggest thing that's shifted in my mind ever since I've committed. It's, it's turned into a lot of, I think for a lot of the years that have passed, I think it's a lot of it has been, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's been doing it for other people and not so much doing it for myself. And I, I think the moment I committed, I realized that like I did accomplish a lot of goals in my life. And I mean, now I walk on the court every day and I'm just doing it to better myself. And I think that's, really important I think that's I wish that was what I was like the past few years but it wasn't and I know it's not like that for the majority of kids trying to yeah. get recruited so I mean it's just the truth but goal wise I mean I'm playing national indoors next week so that's exciting I think I have a really good chance to do well at that um, given that I feel a lot less pressure now so I think yeah. that'll be good and then after that I have winter nats also another really good opportunity I think trying to, I mean, climb their rankings in tennis recruiting. Maybe by the time I get to college, be like top 20. I think that'd be great, a blue chip. But obviously, a lot easier said than done. (laughs) But we'll see. No, listen, you got to set goals. you got to put them out there. And if you get 10%, 20% of them, that's great too. Do you you like the fact now of being part of that? You know, it's such an individual sport. Mm Mm-hmm. Are you excited about this team environment, are you? So excited. Yeah. I always relate it back to high school tennis. Like, I know it's, like, not so similar, but it's similar in some ways. It was, I had the time of my life. Yeah, yeah. I saw you that year. You were – I was so watching fun. those. You guys were enjoying – you should have won. They were in the finals. Of, you were in the semifinals of the States. You, you should have won. I couldn't believe that you didn't win the States that year, you guys. Did you lose to East Brunswick in the semis, right? I did lose in the semis. It was – It was sad. It was really sad. It was sad. a sad day. It's always East it's Brunswick. Always East Brunswick. Yeah, but you, they're ne- they're never usually that great as a girls team. They weren't. Like it was surprising that they were. They're usually the boys were better, but I can't. They were had an incredible team, and how do they do this year? East Brunswick. I don't know. Pingree was number one in the state, but they don't have the all groups anymore. If you know, you don't go down to Mercer and you don't play the all groups anymore. It's so oh, that's silly. So sad. Yeah, this is. This is my take on society of soft. They want everybody to be a sectional champ. 
and not have to feel like anybody loses anymore. Everyone's a winner. Everyone's a winner. So, so you win your section and everybody goes home. So, <laughs> so Pingree's number one in the state, but they didn't play the all groups. No one played. Everybody won their section. Oh. It's silly. Yeah, that is silly. I don't understand what they're doing. It's like doing participation anymore. trophies. Look at this. She's 17. Look at that, Sunti. You see? It takes an athlete to say, hey, participation is bullshit. It is. It is. You gotta work to be number one. You gotta one. work to win. <laughs> so, do you think, speaking of number one, I mean, this is a crazy thing. How high do you think you can play at Clemson the first year? You know, you got four spots, you got a, a, a bunch of seniors. What do you think, though? I think it all depends on who the other recruits are. I mean, okay. I think going in, my goal is probably to play four, I would say, okay. my freshman year. Okay. I don't wanna play number one or two like I never wanted to when I was it's a lot of pressure right? it is and yeah. I think I think it's over the course of the four years you should like want to improve and improve from being let's say like number four or five in the lineup to playing one or two years yeah. in your year like I think that's really important and I think obviously going in and being able to play one as a freshman like that's sick like that's so cool yeah but I mean also like you are a freshman you're the baby of the team like you're not expected to be the best sure so there's less pressure. Yeah. So you're just, whatever you do is gravy, so to speak. You contribute to the team at four and have a winning record and beat a lot of tough players. That's great. I mean, if I can play one, then, like, sure. But <laughs> obviously that's hard to do. So then there's a couple of psychological questions. How for kids? Come here. Come on, Michael. Say hello. Come on, Michael. Say hello. You got four minutes. He can't even say hello. He Mr. Say Yale hi. can't say hello. Michael's son is too good to get on camera. He plays... Michael, where do you play for Yale now? Come on, you can say number one. He plays number one for Yale. Did he's, Yale beat Harvard? Did Yale beat Harvard? No, Ooh, they lost. So that's, that's why he's not going to go on. Because did you lose? I lost the clinching match. Of course he lost the clinching match. That's why he's not on. We were just talking about <laughs> adversity, Michael. It's very difficult. <laughs> Look at Mike. Mike. So, uh... A level of pickleball. Pickleball. Don't insult the pickleballers, Michael. You love it. It's so fun. I know. You should play. No, he wants to play. I, I want to play. Do I you want to? Play. You can play tonight, seven thirty, if you want. McGinley, you want to come back and play? I honestly do. Okay. I'll be back. Uh, your dad. I, his dad talked my ear off for about forty-five minutes about what how I should run the business of pickleball. He's like, "This is what you should do. Charge a membership. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do that." I'm like, "Mr. Son." How are you? Just go and play. <laughs> it was so funny. And he said, you know, Michael, he knew what listens to this podcast. He was like, you know what? I was going to think about Michael running this tennis business, but you said running a business sucks so bad. I said, <laughs> Michael, don't do it. It was so great. You need was, to get in the video. He doesn't want to get in the video. Michael doesn't like that. He doesn't oh, even want to wear a strand sweatshirt because he's, he's too, too, good, he's too good for us. He's too good for us. He's got his yellow stuff on. Yeah, anyways. But, but the, the psychological. Kids, right? Yeah, the Ivy, the Ivy kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll see you later. Michael, I'll see you soon on the court. That was Michael's son, who plays number one for Yale. will be playing with Caroline in about two minutes working and drilling. But Michael doesn't like the camera very much. But psychologically, how do you deal with, and this is for high school kids, how do you deal with cheaters? How do you deal with people that are just downright nasty on the court? It's hard. It, it is hard. I think... I honestly think just trying not to let it bother you. I, obviously, that's hard to do. But for me, if someone does cheat me, it honestly makes me want to beat them even more. Okay. Because I'm like, that's just stupid. Like, what you're doing is stupid. Just play the game. Like, yeah. and I'm like, you don't even deserve to win if that's the point. So, like, I want to beat them. But I think, obviously, I do get upset over it sometimes. It's hard not to. So, I mean, I don't even like I know. know. I know. People Sorry. are like, oh, call the ref. Like, what is the ref going to do? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Just wanted to ask. What? Do, what? I don't even well, know. The ref like, is supposed I to make the line that. calls, right? Just get a line judge. Like, right? how do you deal with it? Well, I told Santi, you don't like what we used to do in high school. We used to just call the next ball out wherever See, it would land it. And then, and, then, and then we'd actually have a discussion and just say, it's hard to do it as a high school kid, but you just say, listen, I can call every ball out or yeah. we can play. And it usually stops them. That's true. You do have to say that sometimes. Yeah, but then you I call. I can't say I've ever done that. Yeah, but, but then you call a line judge. I'm afraid to cheat. It's not cheating. You're doing it on purpose. So it's in the middle of the court. Well, yes, but and in the general, ball bounces. You general, call it out. In general, I get made fun of for the guys because I like, I don't call balls out. Like I never have, never will. Like my coaches get you, mad. You at me have for missed it. a few calls, we get Yes. Mad. So, but I, I'm like, well, that's just not the sport. And they're like, well, 
in a big moment, like, if the ball's close, call it. And I'm like, no, because, like, no. That's just <laughs> wrong. That's just so wrong. That's... What do you mean? No, if it's close. No, she thinks it's in close. In a big moment. She doesn't want to do that. Oh, yeah. I had a, there's a, how about this moment? It was the, one of the sectional finals two years ago, one of the, our students was playing and I, I forget what it was. The, the, the coach, I mean, one of the refs made the call for her and she didn't make any call. I didn't know they could do that. So she, the ball was bouncing. I forget how it, how it played out, but the, one of the persons, people that were watching made the call for her and said, no, you played a ball, that's out, it's out, or it's in, or whatever. I didn't know they could make the call for you. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that. I thought they're just watching, and if there's a dispute, they correct it. But it was a weird sort of thing. That is weird. I've played, you know those, like, UTR, PTT tournaments? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they have, they have the umpires up in the chairs, and they make every call for you. It gets, it gets iffy. I played one on hard court, so there's, like, obviously no mark. Yeah. Some of the calls, I was like, mm. <laughs> I was telling you, match was like four all in the third. She called the ball out on like, like my opponents. She called it out, and it was probably like honestly like two feet inside the court. That's amazing. And my opponents looking at me like, what? And I was like, <laughs> and I you're, mean, supposed, you're supposed to say, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm am sure. Am I gonna question the umpire if the call was in my favor? I know. Is I that guess. considered cheating? I know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. We could she, talk all she day. She posted it on her private story. She literally rewinded the YouTube match and screenshotted it and put it on her private story on Snapchat. That's pretty cool. Making me look bad. <laughs> oh my god, that's like, pretty cool. I didn't make the call. The umpire <laughs> that's so did. terrible. So the umpire didn't see it. I meant cruel, not cool. That's cruel. I mean, that's crazy. Crazy. Tennis people are crazy. You should know but, that. But I know. But in any <laughs> line of work, in any tennis, people are nuts. It takes a lot. It takes a it lot. It takes a lot of patience. But I think the overall theme is. We always say this, whatever you need to do takes a ton of hard work. Even if you get support, even if you get to go to academy, even if you have funds to do it, it's still, there's plenty of people that fail. There's companies that get billions of dollars or millions of dollars in investment money and they screw up and fail. It doesn't matter. You still have to have the tenacity and hard work and the mental attitude. She's got a great, great mental makeup as well. You need that. So congratulations. Thank you. It's been great having you here over the years. Aw. <laughs> oh, I'll oh. keep coming back. I'll keep going. I have to give her a sweatshirt now, of course. Yes. So I'll get you a Clemson sweatshirt. Yes, that's what I, I want. I will. And Christmas I'm gonna go. Present. And I'm gonna go to the match when you start. When in June, I'm gonna go to some of the events. I'll be there. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Oh be so my much god. Fun. I'll be like, guys, this is Steve. <laughs> yeah, this, is Steve. <laughs> this is Steve. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be fun. But congrats. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's awesome talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing. Of course. And we'll see you on the tennis court, Sunday. You're gonna film our practice as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'll pay you for it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Keep <laughs> thank acting. You. Keep working. Thanks, Carla. Yeah, thank you. Hey, everybody. Hope you like the podcast. Please share it with your friends, anybody that you know, anybody that's into tennis, anybody that's into bettering themselves, share it.